Long time no see. We are making some more beer soap this week. I'm currently boiling down the beer that we're going to use in the recipe. I'll share all the steps um, along the way. This is a cold process soap recipe if you're interested. Um, I wanted to do something that was a fall theme. I've had this fragrance oil for a while. I haven't used it. It's called pumpkin maple spout, stout. Um, didn't know what to do with it, but today we're making a beer soap. So I went ahead and I um, boiled my beer like I always do to evaporate the alcohol. And then I'm going to weigh out about 14 ounces of uh, beer and water. So I only had about a little over 8 ounces of just the beer after all the alcohol had burned off and everything. So I'm adding some extra water. And then I'm going to put them in any silicone mold I have or just any mold at all, ice cube tray, whatever. I'm going to put them in the freezer and I'm going to let them freeze for about six to eight hours. Usually um, stuff's really frozen by that time. Um, if you want to leave it overnight, you can do that too. It's just like a prep step. Um, I like to do it. It makes it a little bit easier when we add the lye to the soap. Um, that way it doesn't scorch the beer. It doesn't cause weird discoloration and stuff like that. Um, also melts down the lye a little bit quicker. This is something I like to do. You don't have to do um, this step of freezing it. You don't even have to boil the alcohol out. You can technically leave the um, bottle of alcohol open for a few days on your counter if you like to do that. To me, that's just not really time effective or whatever, so I like to cook it out. But um, on to the next step, guys. All right, here we are. So the beer is now frozen, and I'm going to start adding the lye, but I also want to say that I'm going to change the direction of this video a little bit. Um, as I was doing this, I wasn't sure if I'd get a lot of discoloration for the maple fragrance oil, which I ended up getting some. Um, which was kind of expected, but um, I don't ever put the vanilla stabilizer into my soaps. I have tried it a handful of times in the past, and sometimes it works really wonderful, and other times it's not the best. Um, there, you know, you have to make sure you're using the proper usage rates, plus sometimes you get varying information, I feel like, depending on, you know, the type of fragrance oil you're using, um, the manufacturers and all that, so I'm not really going to talk about that so much but we're gonna come up with some designs to help make our ugly poopy brown soaps look a little better so I had one idea and you let me know at the end of the video or whenever you get to it which design idea you liked better um, I, I kind of like did one thing then I did another thing and I just kept changing my mind but in the end I think I did find out what I do like for this um, color variation and I might do this more often in my soaps moving forward so Let's get on with it. One thing that I do want to add is I do measure out all my oils and then I put them into my big stock pot and then I melt mine down on the burner. I do this at a very low heat. You can put yours in the microwave or whatever. Just make sure that you're doing it at a low temp so you're not ruining any of your oils. Um, it's just a kind of little tip I like to recommend to you guys. Alright, now that everything is sort of melted down, um, I'm going to put everything into one big pot. I like to add a little bit of sodium lactate to my recipe, especially this beer one because I feel like if I don't, when I put it in the silicone mold, it kind of sticks. But anyway, I go ahead and I just soap right at room temperature and make sure everything's pretty, you know, cool. Um, I usually soap around 110 to 120 degrees. Okay, so now I'm ready to share design idea number one that I had. Um, what I did was I went ahead and I mixed everything to a light trace and then I poured a little bit off to the side. Um, I do this a lot with um, soaps that I know are going to discolor quite a bit. I usually pick like a dark mica, um, either a dark brown or a deep red, and um, I will pull a little bit off to the side and add the color to just that. Um, sometimes I'll even do like a really really light color and what I mean by that is like a white or I'll use a clay or titanium dioxide. Those are things that work well. 
Um, you can see the results for this soap and it just kind of is going to vary depending on the vanilla in the soap that you have. So uh, also you see me probably like tapping down the pot a lot. Um, I've been noticing in some of my soaps that I am getting little white spots in them. So I've just been making sure to tap down the soap better as much as I can so that we get a lot of those little tiny white spots out of my soap. Um, I get questions a lot from people of how that works and that's just like one example or a reason why you might be getting white spots in your soap. Not the only reason though. There's lots of reasons. <laughs> but for me, that's what I figured out it was. Um, so I, like I was saying before though about the design and color, I saved just a little bit of the brown and I kind of wanted to do, you know, two-tone color hoping to get two different shades of brown and one being a little bit darker than the other. Um, I also added some gold mica to the top that I mixed with some oil. Um, if you watch my channel, you'll know that the gold mica is my favorite, absolute favorite, and I use the one from Nurture Soap. It's called, I think, Gold Dust. Um, if you guys want to find that product, I have a link down in the description box below. Um, I honestly love all the micas that they have, and I feel like most of them are reasonably priced, especially if you're a hobby soaper like me. I don't sell my soaps. Um, well, I, I, I do sometimes, but I, most of the time I don't sell them, I just kind of hobby make soap. So um, anyways, this is the top idea and the first part of the design. Um, like I said, I use the gold a lot, especially on my beer soaps. So after waiting about a day or two, I was ready to pop this out of the mold and um, go ahead and cut it. So you can see everything on the outside is a very, very deep dark brown, um, which is good and great, but let's see how the inside of the soap looks. All right, so I'm noticing that it does have two really distinct um, colors right now, um, but I also noticed that on the inside that there is a dark rim all the way around. So that means once the, the air starts hitting the soap, it's probably all going to turn that deep dark brown. Even the um, spots where I added the color and that ended up what kind of happened so you can see that in a few clips um, into the future I don't know how you want to say that but coming up soon um, I will show you what the soap looks like after sitting about three days so I decided we needed more color to this ugly brown soap so I am using the gold dust again and the ruby red mica from nurture soap and I'm gonna make a little bit of soap dough um, out of melt and pour soap and I'm kind of just showing quick shots if you guys want to learn how to make this I do have another video that goes into further description about making soap dough with melt and pour soap it does kind of work it's a you know alternative to using um, regular cold process soap um, you can kind of make it on the fly you don't have to wait for it to set up so much um, you can kind of store it and come back to it it does harden and it will re-soften depending on like body heat and stuff like that. Just keep in mind that you are working with melt and pour soap so that's why it softens. Um, it also, people wanted to know like about the final texture. It kind of depends on how you do the ratio of your um, ingredients. You probably could add a bit of like sodium lactate or um, salt to the recipe and it would probably harden it up a little bit further. But I find it when I do it, it's usually somewhat of a hard to spongy consistency when it's like dry and you're not applying direct heat to it, if that makes sense. So for this design idea, um, I was going to make little maple leaves because I thought since it's maple stout, it would be very fitting. Um, however, I'm not the best sculptor at sculpting very intricate tiny little details. I was able to get a few leaves um, that I liked the way they looked and I probably only spent about 20 to 30 minutes on this. I didn't spend a lot of time because I was starting to get frustrated and I, honestly I just had other things to do that day. But I went ahead and made a few leaves so I can test it out and see if I like it and then if I did like it I would make more. Um, but we'll go into that in a second too. So for each of these leaves, this little soap dough stays pretty malleable and you can just use whatever tools you have. I couldn't find my actual tools that I have for like sculpting clay and stuff. I really don't know where I put them so I was just using what I had uh, on hand and it was a little skewer. Had I had my other tools, these might have turned out a little bit better. 
Um, you can use a cookie cutter or something like that too um, if you wanted to use this method. So to stick these on the soap, I melted down just a tiny bit of clear melt and pour base and added again the gold to it. And um, then I was putting the leaves on top and letting it dry. They will stay on there that way, especially if you score both sides of your like soap, which mine is a textured top, and then also the little embed that you're putting on there. Um, they'll stay on there pretty good. So you don't really have to worry about them popping off if you try to do something like this as long as you have a little bit of the melt and pour soap on there. So what I'm doing right now is making a little bit of mica paint. The leaves were a very ugly pinky flesh tone kind of reddish pink. Um, obviously leaves don't look like that so I was like well maybe I will paint these and I'll add some glitter um, and they'll just look great. And like I said, when I do my designs and stuff, sometimes I just kind of experiment with them. Um, they did look a lot better when I painted them and they seemed to come to life a little bit more. Um, but at the end of the day, it was just not quite what I had envisioned in my head. So um, I kind of just set those aside and let them dry and then I started on another idea that popped into my head as I was doing this. Um, and I've done it for other things too. It's just been a really long time, but I thought I would share it with you guys. So not really liking the way those leaves looked, I started taking this paint and kind of splattering it on my other soap to kind of give it a little bit of a shimmery Picasso vibe, which I'm going to let you know that this does make a big mess, but it is also very easy to clean with just, you know, a little bit of water and a paper towel if you get it all over your counters like I did. But I love the way that it looks. Um, it just kind of shimmers and shines, and I also drizzled a little bit of that um, melt and pour soap that I had left over because I don't like to waste the soap so I thought it gave it um, a very textured look and just kind of elevated it a little bit more and when the Sun hit the red it looked great but I had to kind of rotate the soaps a few times to get them you know to make sure I got color on all sides of the soap Overall, I had a lot of fun making this soap, even though it was somewhat of a learning process and it was hard for me to decide what design I wanted to go with. Um, I think I know which design that I ended up liking better, um, but I want to hear from you guys. Um, what are some of your soap designs that you do when you're dealing with brown, like vanilla discoloring soap? Um, how do you dress that up? Do you just leave it? And what soap idea did you guys like better from me? Do you like the little soap dough um, maple leaves or do you like the sort of Picasso splattered red paint better? Just go ahead and leave a comment down below um, to let me know that you're watching and you enjoy the content. Or another way you can let me know that you enjoy the content is to go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, especially if you learned something today. It helps me know that you guys um, value the content and that you're getting something out of it and it inspires me to keep making more. So this is another shot of it when it had a little bit more color on it. Um, personally, I love it and I think this is my favorite. I know it's going to wash off within the first wash or two, but I just think it looks really nice. And um, I don't think a lot of people, even customers, will be that put off by that. It's just kind of, like I said, a different design element. And I do just want to give one more reminder and thank everyone for watching today, um, especially if you're a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe if you're not. Um, again, I appreciate everybody that's here. Um, don't forget to um, check out all of the links I have down in the description if you're, you uh, want to know where I got any of the products from. I'm trying to put as much information down there for you guys as possible so that way when I do have questions, or I'll maybe get a little bit less questions because all the information will be there for you guys. Um, let me know again though, leave a comment about which design did you like better. Do you like these splattered soaps or do you like the maple leaf soaps? And leave some comments on what you guys do to dress up your vanilla sort of discoloration soaps. Alright, love you guys and see you next time.